In this video, we review dynamic blocks in Terraform with Azure. Hello everyone, my name is Travis and this is Sereldos. In this video, we review Terraform dynamic blocks and how to use it to create multiple instances of a sub-resource. But hold on, did you subscribe? If not, why not do it now? I'll wait. Please also let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like to learn? Check out my Azure Hybrid Identities and Azure Virtual Desktop courses on Unibee.com. The link is below. While you're down there, check out the merch and the join option. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now back to it. Some resources we build in Terraform have repeatable nested blocks in their arguments. For example, servers can have multiple hard drives or network interface cards and an app service plan can host multiple app services. In the example coming up, we use a dynamic block to create multiple rules for a new network security group. The for each loop and dynamic block may seem similar. A for each loop is used to create multiple similar instances of an object such as a resource. A dynamic block uses a for each loop to create multiple copies of a sub resource nested inside a resource block. It's used to create a repeatable nested block within the resource arguments. Instead of manually adding each additional object as a new block of code in a resource, like multiple hard drives on a virtual machine, we can create a dynamic block that accepts any number of objects as variables and then creates each of them. That makes the code easier to use as a module. Dynamic blocks can be used in resource data provider and provisioner blocks. Dynamic blocks can be nested inside of other dynamic blocks but it's recommended to use nesting sparingly because overuse can make the code difficult to read. Let's open VS Code and build a new security group with a dynamic block. Here we are in VS Code. We'll start out with a simple module structure that deploys a resource group. From here, we'll add a network security group. Let's go to the Terraform registry. And here we are, Azure RM network security group. Let's copy this section in. We'll just paste it at the end of the main.tf. Let's review the variables for the location and the resource group name. That's in variables.tf. These were already added for the resource group. I'm trying to stick with the topic at hand, so I did this ahead of time. If you're unsure what this is about, check out my other videos on setting up an environment and creating Terraform infrastructure. Let's add the name for the network security group. We'll save that. Let's go back to our main.tf. Now we can update the first three arguments. Name is var.name. Location is var.location. And for resource group name, for this I'll use Azure RM underscore resource underscore group. dot name. I also could have used var dot resource group name, as well as for the location, we could have used the Azure RM underscore resource underscore group dot resource group dot location. By using the resource group name this way, it makes the network security group dependent on the creation of the resource group. Next, we have security rules. Odds are there will be more than one. Without looping, we would have to create a new block for each rule. That doesn't make this code portable, however. What if we need two rules for one deployment and eight for another? Let's turn this into a dynamic block. Start by adding dynamic before security rules and put security rules in double quotes. It's now a dynamic block. One note, security underscore rule is not a local name like resource underscore group in the resource group. This is still a security rule block that the network security group expects to see. It's a dynamic argument for that resource. After the opening curly bracket, we'll add four underscore each equal sign. We need to name our variable for the security rules. Let's go to variables next. 
and let me paste in a couple options. We have two options here. The first option creates a variable called NSG underscore rules with a type of list. It also creates an object with the names and data types for each element that it expects in the variable. This is helpful to understand what type of information the module is expecting. The other option that's commented out. Now we can see it. This option just creates a variable with the type list. Both options will work, but I think the first option makes the variable clearer to read and also has input validation. So we'll just delete the second one. Now that we know the network security group variable name, Let's go back to main.tf and we will come back to this shortly. So for each, we'll add var.nsg underscore rules. This statement indicates we'll loop through each element in the var.nsg underscore rules list. There could be one security rule in that list or there could be 20. Whatever we pass into it, it'll create a security rule block for each one. Next, there are a number of items that we supplied that are hard-coded. We can remove all the pre-supplied values. Also, we need to convert the values into a content block. Think of the dynamic block as generating a new security rule block for each rule we supply. The content block is the content for each new security rule block. We'll add content. Let's add an opening squiggly bracket. And at the very end, we'll add a closing squiggly bracket. Don't forget the opening and closing bracket. We're close. Now we need to provide the value for each of these elements. And remember, we're pulling this from a list supplied as a variable. To do that, we're gonna specify security underscore rule dot value. So as it loops through, this will specify each element in the list. So we'll add a square bracket, double quote, name. And just to get a visual on this, if we go back to variables, here's where we're passing a name. And it helps that we have these all the same name all the way across. I guess they don't need to be, but that would be confusing. We'll do this again with priority. I'll fast forward and add the rest. There we are, and we can always format the document by doing Control Shift P, format. There we go. So as I said before, as it goes through each iteration of the vars.nsg underscore rules value, it grabs the name, priority, direction, and so on from that instance of the rule. It uses that information to create a new security rule code block. Before we go any further, let's fix tags. There we go. Now we'll save this. Hey, I have to jump in. I missed something while recording this. Be sure to update the local name for the network security group from example to network underscore security underscore group. That name's referenced in the output. Back to it. Now we have our resource blocks. We've got our variables. Next, let's apply the NSG underscore rules values with the terraform.tfvars file. The terraform.tfvars file is like an answer file for our variables. I prefer this over supplying defaults to the variables. If a default value is supplied for a variable, that makes that variable optional. So for testing, it makes more sense to use a terraform.tfvars file. Also, let's hop over to the readme file. All consumable modules should have a readme file. This is written in Markdown. Let's view the version that looks nice. We can do that by hitting the button here with a little magnifying glass. Here there's a description along with input and outputs. At the very end, we do output the network security group ID. That can be used as an input to create a virtual network. Let's go back to inputs. And although the formatting doesn't look too great, we can copy this entire block of inputs and paste that into a terraform.tfvars file to use as an example. Okay, let's go back to the terraform.tfvars file. 
At the beginning, we have the location, resource group name, name of the security group, and then also tags. Under NSG underscore rules, we have a list of three sets of rules. The square bracket indicates that this is a list. The first item is the allow web in, that's allowing port 80 in. The second rule is allow SSL in, that's allowing inbound port 443. And the very last rule is allow RDP in. This allows inbound port 3389. Modify them however you'd like to for your own rule. You can add one, five, or more. The dynamic block will process each and add it to the final deployment. Let's save all the files and run Terraform init and Terraform plan. And of course, make sure you're logged into Azure already. That looks good. Let's run Terraform apply. There it goes, it's successful. Notice it's also outputting the ID of the network security group. That's needed if we want to apply the security group to a VNet or a subnet. We can also view the finished network security group and rules in the portal now that it's finished. Here it is, here's the network security group along with the rules we created. That is how to use dynamic blocks in Terraform. I hope this helps you better understand how to use dynamic blocks. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.